All right. Hello, everybody. This is William Bell with All Things Fulfilled. I want to take just a quick minute to do a very short video on a question that was received over Facebook, but it's a question that many people ask. And what they're looking for is some external evidence for the fulfillment of all things. In other words, we provide scriptures that state that very clearly. For example, in Luke chapter 21, verses 20 through 22, Jesus said, uh, when you see Jerusalem surrounding with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart. And let not those who are in the countries enter her, for these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. And then he says in verse 32 that that generation would not pass away until all those things had taken place. And yet when we provide these scriptures, people still ask us, well, what about someone after 70 AD, after the temple was destroyed, uh, telling us that all these things were fulfilled. And, you know, from my perspective, what that's saying is that they're elevating the testimony of man above the word of God. And I understand that they want some corroborative information. And basically what they're saying is, if we say it, and we live after 70 AD, that it's not acceptable. And uh, yet, if someone who lived at the time says it, then it is acceptable. So what I want to do is provide uh, documentation for someone who actually wrote, a credible historian who wrote and actually stated that all the prophecies in Daniel had been fulfilled. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and even the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors and salute to you, brethren. All you supporters and believers of the ministry of this faith, including you sisters as well, shalom to the elect. So anyway, I want to do a response off of a response. I believe Apostle Elder Ramlub, Elder Apostle Ramlub, did a video. Um, I actually saw it, some of it in a live stream, um, addressing live comments. William Bell, pre preterism, and then. Um, which pre go like like predestination pre before, and then uh, uh, Elder Manat Zatba of GMS South Carolina, um, he did one addressing live comments William Bell and preterism. So, you know these things are important that we must go over to keep watch and defend the gospel at all costs. Now I'll jump into a little bit of it, you know, because. Actually, we're just going to go through some scriptures, you know, and where the spirit goes, it leads us. Um, because after all, we, um, you know, at the end of the day, we all have fall short, as Paul said. We've all have sinned, but I guess these preachers that believe that we are in the new covenant, right, says that we're covered, you know, by the blood of by the blood of Yahweh, right? And um, that we don't have to worry about anything anymore. Well, first of all, this goes even back to Eusebius, but even in the time of slavery, it, it made sense to say that the prophecies was already fulfilled and these people are in charge. They're running the show and all you have to do is follow Jesus and you'll be saved because you're covered by his blood. Now, the people who's been destroyed, whipped, beaten, had families broken and destroyed, it's easy to fall into that type of temptation of doctrine because you had nothing else. When you're that broken, you believe something like that. So you're going back from the time of that they enforced that in the 1500s with uh, Martin Luther and them. They pushed that doctrine, John Calvin and all of them. And this is why all your scholars, when you read the, the when you go into your commentary, the scholars would read Deuteronomy 28 and 68 as something that happened in 70 AD. If you notice, everything is in 70 AD. But Amos 3 says the Lord would do nothing but reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Those scholars, which means students, aren't prophets of the Most High. So we're going to go through quite a few scriptures and um, debunk this false doctrine. Now, first we got to go, I don't know where I'm going to go. John the Revelator. Right on the Alma Patmo, Alana Patmos. That's what he read. This is what he saw. Let's go to Revelation one and seven. 
Uh, boy, it jumped on me. Revelation 1 and 7. Well, before I go there, let's go to Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. The thing that has been, and we're going to go also into Luke 20, I think 20 and 21 to 33. I'm just going to hit the point where it said, when it talks about the generation. It says, the thing that have been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything wherein it may be said, see, this is new? It has already been of old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things, right? Neither shall there be thing, uh, be there be any remembrance of things that are to come. So we can clearly see this is going in the uh, reincarnation. You don't remember your past life, and you don't know the future life, right? So you know, hold on to that when we talk about generations, right? So we're going to go to Revelation one. I'm going to try to get through this quick. Let's see what John said. Revelation 1 and 7. I'm going to just hit the scriptures. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Now, I wanted that this happen already. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall be well, be well because of him. Now, you go back in that time, the whole earth wasn't fully inhabited, number one. You can't say this was 70 A.D. He cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. How is every eye going to see him back in the day? In clouds, okay? And the ones who pierced him. So they might say, this is going back to 70 A.D. <laughs> That's what they'll say. But we read Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, there's no new thing under the sun. If that was the case, just saying if that was the case, you would see this coming to pass. Some prophecies uh, went two, two and three fold. But this is talking about the coming of the Messiah. This is why it's called um, the revealing or unveiling, right? That's what revelation means. A lot of people didn't know, okay? So when you go to revelation, let's go back up here. You know, sometimes these videos, you got... You got to open up so many tabs to make the point. Revelation 13 and 16. And he calls of both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hands or on their forehead. And that no man might buy, sell or save he that have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Right. So that this happened already. Right. I guess they're going to read those scholars commentators and say but a lot of the scholars say this is a thing that's to come and if there's a so-called antichrist which is many anti-messiahs if the anti-messiah is to come then that would be a prophecy right he also quoted daniel let me go to daniel real quick i really don't want to jump around because it's a lot to go into let's go to which we read revelation 13 let me see here, Revelation 13. Let me see if I can find Daniel. I believe I have it up somewhere. Let's go to Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and even forever and ever. Did that happen yet? And this is written in the book of Daniels. And this is what he quoted. Did the saints of the Most High take the kingdom and possess the kingdom? Now, remind you, yeah, the one you call Jesus, Yahawashah, has already died, right? He's already died. And they said that ushered in the new covenant, also ushering in the kingdom, right? So who are the saints of the Most High that took the kingdom and possessed the kingdom forever and even forever and ever? Clearly, this is not the kingdom of heaven. It starts within you, but this is clearly not the kingdom of heaven. So who is those saints of the Most High that took the kingdom? We see what happened to T.D. Jakes. He can't be a saint, saint, saint of the Most High, right? Let's go to uh, the one he quoted, Luke 21 and 32. Let's go to Luke 21 and 32 real quick. I know I got it somewhere. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away to all be fulfilled. So that's what they're going on. 
this generation, which goes to genealogy, which goes to stock, right? So now, what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to go back to Matthew 5. We're going to have to go to Matthew 5. And there's a reason why I read Ecclesiastes 1 as well, right? See, those, those disciples, there was a lot of things Yahawashah said that they thought was going to come in their time. But this is Matthew 5 and 17. It says, Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. And this again is what they say. That preterism or whatever. For I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass one jot and one tittle, shall no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. So now you see, um, I come not to destroy it, but fulfill. There's different fulfillments, right? And then he goes on to say, Till heaven or earth pass one jot or one tittle, uh, and no one shall pass from the law till all be fulfilled, which means there's still fulfillment to come, right? Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be counted least in the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. So you know damn well, a lot of us, um, and there are some people who are preachers, some people in different doctrines who have now come into the truth and they taught wrong doctrine. So you have to understand that, that, you know, there's no way that we're in the kingdom of heaven. Then that means they will be counted least in the kingdom of heaven. Right? So, and this is why I read Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, because there's no new thing under the sun. Right? So you go back. Those generations are back today. Let's go to, let me go, what is it, Matthew 19? Let's see what Matthew 19 say. Right? This proves it right here in Matthew 19, by the way. Um, I don't even think I have it up. I thought I have it, had it up. Let's go to Matthew 19. And let's go to... We're going to jump down to 20, the 28th verse, something like that. Matthew 19 and 28. And Jesus, Yahweh said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. This is what Yahweh said. In the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory. Right? This is what it says. Ye all shall sit upon the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. This is a future prophecy. And this is why he said, ye have followed me in the regeneration. Because generations come and go. But those generations come back. That's the key. Those generations come back. That's why we read Revelation 1 and 7. That's why when you go to the, um, there's a story in the scriptures in Matthew that's called, what ye think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they'd say, the son of David. Then how can David call him, his son Lord? Because Solomon was the Messiah, right? That's too deep for some. But he's, he wasn't the actual Messiah at that time, but he re, you know came back as the Messiah. But that was the son of the Most High. There's a thing called reincarnation. And generations reincarnate. The deadly wound that was healed is the Roman Empire. Empires reincarnate. Everything comes back in, in full perspective. Right? Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Right? So... Um, Let's go to Obadiah 1 and 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for a stubble. They have no historical proof or uh, evidence that the Edomites was totally for stubble and done away with. What this also proves is that the Lord will destroy you by nations. Their mindset of who the Lord is and what he teaches and what he's about is totally corrupt. Right? Let's go to another one. I don't want to just, you know, I'm not going to stay on the one. Well, let me keep keep reading. Obadiah 1 and 18. 
It says, and, de uh, and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord have spoken it. For the Lord has spoken it, right? So let's go to Isaiah. And in several scriptures, um, let's go to Isaiah. And so what these people will do, they'll read a lot of the commentaries and they'll read a lot of uh, what they have to say. And then they'll say, okay, that happened a long time ago. Uh, the bottom line, if you can't see it, you can't see it. But these are all prophecies. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, the Israelites. And the people shall take them to the... Uh, uh, shall take them and bring them to the place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives who captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. So when did that happen? We can also go to Isaiah 11 and 11 when he said, this is what he said. I don't know how this is not a, pro a prophecy. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush uh, and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hemoth and from all the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an assign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together to disperse, uh, James 1 and 1, of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So now we got to understand the whole earth was not occupied at that time. The Israelites was uh, they it was over here. You had the tribes over here, but the Israelites has been scattered to the all four corners. When did the Messiah come to the Americas and various other places across the globe and and deliver all these people, these dispersed Israelites? We'll wait on that answer as well. We'll have to wait on that as well. We could also go to Revelation 18, right? When it talks about the, uh, the, daughter, the daughter of Babylon, Babylon has fallen and has become the habitation of devils. I guess they'll say that's in 70 AD as well or before prior. Verse 11, the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, talking about Babylon, for no man buyeth her merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold, silver, precious stone, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet, and all thine wood and all thy manner of vessels, ivory manner vessels, most precious wood, basically all the things that it has. Then it says, and alas, that great city, which is clothed in fine linen, the purple and scarlet, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For one hour, so uh, great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster and every company of ships and, and uh, sailors, and as many trade sea stood afar off and cried when they said the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? Right? So they was, they was all messed up. Basically, all the nations are going to be messed up because of the burning of Babylon. The whole city, the city, done, city goes to citizen. It don't necessarily have to mean some small little city in a country. Right? This is one big city. Okay? So you can see clearly see all the prophecies. Uh, Matthew 26, 29. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth the fruit of the vine until I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Right? That's what Yahweh said. So, going back to that, at the end of the day, right, these things must come to pass. There's a lot that has to come to pass. Right, and we need the Messiah in the in the faith, the gift of faith, more than anything at this point, because there will be a time of trouble, a time of Jacob's trouble. That's also a prophecy. You know, to say that there will be no prophecies, all prophecies are already done, then that means everybody's salvation is sealed. That that believe as they say, they don't have to worry about anything. Right. They got to they got to worry about having faith anymore. Right. That's a faithless doctrine, because now 
we don't got to wait on the Messiah anymore. So it still doesn't make sense. So how the hell are you going to get up out of here? That has to be a prophecy for you to get up out of here. Again, it, it, it doesn't make sense. Um, I don't, it's, you know, that goes back to Hebrews 8. 8 and 11, and they shall not teach every man their neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Is that the case now? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So we could clearly see uh, this is a false doctrine. There's so many prophecies moving forward to Mark, right? Yahweh shall return in famines, you know, there will be another siege, right? So there will be no food. There going to be a time of trouble. So what you're teaching people is smooth words. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be smooth and everything's going to be all right. And that's absolutely a lie. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.